This is a 3D printed robotic actuator and it's what makes the difference between this robot and this robot. I love watching videos of walking robots as much as the next guy, but making them would be so much cooler. So creating an electric actuator is the first step in that process, and world domination is the last. Or maybe just a dance off for now. Electric actuators pretty much have the same design scheme as a standard RC servo. Servos have a driving motor, a gear drive to increase torque, and a motor controller. The goal here is to scale up the design of a servo with a few slight modifications. I started by doing research on the best actuator designs and found my solution to be MIT's Mini Cheetah. The Mini Cheetah uses quasi-direct drive actuators or actuators with a high torque motor and a low gear reduction. This is probably the most optimal actuator design for walking robots since you get a high torque output, high efficiency, and high compliance. We'll first need a pancake style brushless motor. Brushless motors are more efficient than standard DC motors, and the ones that have the outer runner pancake style design have high torque because the air gap of a brushless motor is directly proportional to its torque density. This means that the flatter the motor, the higher the torque density, and the higher the torque density, the more capable the actuator is in supporting itself and other loads. I bought this cheap 90 kV brushless motor on AliExpress. It's meant for agriculture drones, so it definitely has some kick to it. But we'll definitely need more torque, which brings me to the gear drive. Quasi-direct drive actuators use gear drives with low gear reductions, usually between 3 to 1 and 10 to 1. And going back to the RC servo, we can see that it needs a high gear reduction because the driving motor is very low torque. But since quasi to brake drive actuators already use a brushless motor with high torque, you only need a small gear ratio to have a high overall torque output while still maintaining good levels of efficiency, back drivability, and speed. I started off with a slicordal gear drive design, but it took up too much space, so instead I went with this 9 to 1 planetary gear set that uses helical gears since helical gears are ideal for high load applications and are also very quiet. One of the essential parts of any actuator is the motor controller. Brushless motors generally use electronic speed controllers to drive them, but ESCs don't provide constant torque or position control, which is why I'll be using an FOC controller. FOC, or Field Oriented Control, is a closed loop control system that allows you to control the position, velocity, or torque of a brushless motor. Here I have the O-Drive S1. And the cool thing about controllers like this is that you can get various degrees of compliance by changing the PID gains of the controller, which effectively turns a brushless motor into a virtual spring. This compliance is really essential in absorbing shock and giving walking robots a realistic gait. The S1 also has an onboard encoder, so I'll be mounting it to the bottom of the actuator to measure the brushless motor's position. I made a quick prototype of the actuator design, and apart from gear clearance, it's looking pretty good. And after just a few more test prints, I think it's time to build the real thing.
with the actuator built, it's time to run some tests. So after writing some code, let's start off with just getting it to spin. With a 9 to 1 gear reduction, we get a top speed of about 140 RPM. You can see how fast this would be in a robotic application when setting the actuator to toggle between two positions. What I'm most interested in with this actuator is its compliance and torque rating. At a low level of compliance, the actuator is easy to backdrive without much effort. Increasing the torque, the arm becomes a bit harder to backdrive and springs back into place quicker. And at full torque, it's almost impossible to backdrive at all. Like a virtual spring, the actuator is able to dampen and stiffen itself. At full torque mode, we can add some weight on the arm to see how much the actuator can hold. Let's start with five pounds. It looks like it's able to hold pretty well and can even do robot curls to prove it. Next, we'll try 10 pounds. With 10 pounds, it's definitely struggling more and heating a lot. Now, it can't do robot curls. This is probably close to the peak torque, but just to confirm, I decided to have the actuator pressed down on a scale. Holding up to 10 pounds on a 14 and a half inch lever makes the peak holding torque about 16.36 newton meters when the current max is set to 36 amps. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this actuator turned out. At 935 grams, the actuator is fairly lightweight. The lower half of the actuator has air vents for passive cooling and the output bearing is located on the inside of the actuator, which means that it doesn't need a cover to operate. You can also replace all of the gears without taking apart the entire actuator which I totally planned for in the design. Another great aspect of this project is that it's completely open source. So if you'd like to read more about the technical aspects or even build your own, check out my website in the link below. I have so many more O drives and brushless motors, so a walking robot is inevitable at this point. Let me know what kind of walking robots you think I should make or even any other projects that could use this actuator. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.